illustrious presence, sir. Thank you. Be seated. Yes. All right, good morning. Good morning. All right, welcome back. Day number 10. State's case, next witness. State House Tom Darnell. I do. Take a seat in the witness stand. State your name again for the record. Spell your last name. My name is Thomas Edward Darnell. Last name is spelled D A R N E L L. Good morning, Agent Darnell. Good morning. Um, could you tell the jurors um, where you work? I am a fingerprint examiner at the State Law Enforcement Division uh, Forensic Crime Lab. And how long have you um, been a fingerprint examiner for SLED? Approximately 30 years. Can you tell us some of your um, training education um, that you've had? Yes, ma'am. To begin with, I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice from the University of South Carolina, where I graduated in 1982. I started my employment with the Richland County Sheriff's Office in Columbia, where I was employed for about eight years. I started my career at SLED in 1990 in the late print crime scene department. During that time, I completed an in-house training program that dealt with all aspects of fingerprint the fingerprint science I've attended a number of uh, courses uh, across the state as well as out-of-state courses that, deal, that dealt with all areas of fingerprint science to include how to process evidence for fingerprints and how to compare fingerprints and I also trained under the FBI Academy in Quantico Virginia in the same area of, of uh, fingerprints I have and I've also trained other examiners to do the same job that I'm doing today. Um, Your Honor, at this time the state would move to qualify um, Agent Tom Darnell as an expert in fingerprint analysis. Thanks. <clears throat> He's so qualified. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, all right, Agent Darnell, could you just kind of um, tell us in general um, about um, fingerprint evidence? Well, basically, um, fingerprint evidence can be most anything. Uh, it can be items that are porous, items that are non-porous, items that come to SLED and where we get requested to process them to see if we can identify any fingerprints that might be on the surface. Uh, fingerprints are primarily moisture. About 98% of the fingerprint that may be left on the surface is nothing more than moisture perspiration or sweat, if you want to call it sweat. Um, and then once we uh, determine the type of evidence that we have, then we try to uh, develop it, we try to enhance any impressions that might be there. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that in most cases, the fingerprints that we're trying to develop are invisible, basically latent. A latent print means just that, hidden or invisible. So it would require some enhancement. And how or what is the process of um, finding these hidden fingerprints? Well, we, we have uh, several different uh, techniques that we can use, uh, everything from uh, super glue fuming to alternate light sources to fluorescent dye stains to different chemicals that we can use. There's also the, the black fingerprint powder, which is still being used. We don't use a whole lot of that in our laboratory today, but we, we tend to go with the uh, fluorescent dye stains and the different light sources. It just depends on the type of evidence that we're trying to process. And now you mentioned, was it, um, you say super glue fuming? Yes, ma'am. Um, could you describe how that works? Super glue, what we do is we take the evidence, first of all, it has to be a non-porous surface. Uh, that and, and can evidence, you give us an example of a non-porous surface versus a porous surface? Not a uh, non-porous would be like a uh, a can, uh, a gun, a cartridge case. Uh, porous would be like paper. 
uh, a paper cup, paper plate, a piece of uh, like a handwritten note or a check or something like along that line. Um, but the super glue is is a commonly used process across the country, in fact, across the world. Um, and the super glue is simply heated, and it creates a vapor or a fume, and that vapor will affix itself to any impressions that might be present on the surface. It enables us to see it better, and it, and it also enables us to use a different technique or a different step of the process when it comes to trying to enhance the impression. Okay, and when um, that print, I guess, is revealed in the fuming process, what do you do to analyze the print? Well, once we get the print developed, we uh, photo uh, have it photographed. Uh, we have the, the luxury of having a photo studio within our laboratory, and uh, we have a, 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 a photographer that will document that for us uh, photographically so that we can then compare it to any known standards that we may be asked to compare it to. So you would use the photograph for comparison purposes? Yes, ma'am. You don't do any kind of lifts of the print or anything like that? Uh, I have, I've done lots of lifts over my career with the black powder and the, and the clear tape, which is what most of you are probably familiar with. Uh, but uh, in this case, it was black powder was not used. Uh, it, this was, I was working strictly off of a photograph. Um, so you did receive some items to test in this case for fingerprints? I did. I'm going to have you take a look at States Exhibit 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, and 68. Are those 300 blackout shell cases that you received to process for fingerprint evidence? It is. And did you find any evidence on those cases? Actually, I did not. Uh, there was uh, what we call the, the result that I used in this, with these items was that there was no fingerprint evidence was observed. Would you expect to find fingerprint evidence on fire cases? We, uh, we don't find a lot of uh, developed prints on cartridge cases. It, it does happen. Uh, we do find fingerprints on cartridge cases, but just not, not a great deal. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that the cartridge cases uh, are, they're, they're exposed to heat, they're exposed to uh, friction, and since fingerprints are so fragile, a lot of times that is probably a couple of reasons why we don't find a lot of prints on cartridge cases. All right, did you also receive um, State's Exhibit 33 and 34 to test for or examined for fingerprint evidence? I did. Did you find any fingerprint evidence on those shot shells? I did not. And again, would you expect to find fingerprint evidence <clears throat> on items of that nature? Uh, you know, we, we, we always make the attempt. Uh, sometimes we're surprised when we process evidence that something will develop. Uh, we, I, I personally don't have, a, I've not had a lot of success with getting prints on shot shells. It's not to say that it hasn't happened. And um, you said you've been doing this for about 30 years? Yes, ma'am. And in that time, have you ever found yourself a fingerprint on a fired um, case or shot shell? I can't recall that I have developed anything that I can identify. Uh, I have developed wrist detail or I have developed uh, fingerprints on cartridge cases, but I can't recall honestly having a case where I was able to actually identify. Did you also receive a um, shotgun to check for fingerprint evidence? I did. That being State's Exhibit 4, a Benelli Super Black Eagle 3. Um, did you find any fingerprint evidence on that weapon? I did not. Um, what else did you do with that weapon while you had it? Uh, one of the uh, there was an additional request to have it swabbed for, D, for touch DNA, uh, which, which I did. I swabbed various areas of the, of the uh, shotgun for DNA purposes. And I will hand you State's Exhibit 307. Are those the swabs that you collected from that shotgun? 
Yes, ma'am, it has the date that I collected it. It has my name and my initials and on the envelopes as well as on the seal. Your Honor, at this time we have moved case 307 into evidence. The swabs from the shotgun. It says in the fence. I'm not sure which shotgun. From the, um, the Benelli that was recovered at the scene. Yes. No objection. It's admitted. And do you recall where on that gun you collected those swabs? Yes, ma'am. Could you tell the jury? If I could look at my notes real quick. I uh, swabbed the trigger. I swabbed the rear stock, front stock, and the ejection lever on the shotgun. Um, yes, and that, that's two areas that I swabbed. And why would you have... Um, swab those particular areas? Well, typically in a, in a case involving guns, shotguns, pistols, uh, we, we typically swab the trigger separately um, to, to possibly get a print on the trigger as, as to who might have last had their finger on the trigger. Um, and then we swab other areas of the gun that might be more conducive for touch DNA versus latent prints. Anytime we get something that we have a latent print request and a DNA request. We have to try to determine which area to swab, which, which area is typically handled by someone um, that might give us the best chance for any type of forensic evidence, whether it be DNA or latent prints. And did you also swab um, the head stamps of um, those two shot shells? Uh, yes, I did. And those swabs are in states 307 up there? With the other swabs, is that correct? That's correct. Did you have an occasion to also examine Paul's cell phone? I did. I'm going to give you states exhibit 309. Are those the swabs that you collected from Paul Murdo's cell phone? Um, I, these are swabs that I took from a cell phone. I, I don't know for sure whose phone it was, but, but I, these are swabs that I took from the phone, which was my item 25. And could you um, refer to your report to tell us what item 25 was listed as? Item 25 is listed as a, a one iPhone cell phone black in color with a clear case. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move to admit state's exhibit 309. No objection. Did you also examine that cell phone for fingerprints? I did. Did you find any fingerprints on the phone? I did not find anything that I could identify. Um, I found a very small amount of fingerprint evidence on the phone. Uh, the result that I had to render uh, was what we refer to as no value for comparison, which what that simply means is that there was the evidence of someone's fingers having come in contact with the phone. There just was not enough detail, not enough clarity for me to be able to compare it to anyone. Do you recall examining some other um, shotguns or rifles in this case? Yes, ma'am. That would be a 300 blackout rifle, a Mossberg shotgun, a Browning shotgun, and another Benelli shotgun? That's correct. Did you find any fingerprints on any of those guns? Nothing that I could identify. Um, again, the result of no value for comparison was a result that I uh, reported. And if a gun is, has a camouflage print, for example, would that make it harder to find fingerprints on that weapon? Well, not not necessarily. Uh, we, we have we have different we have some some very bright lights that we would use to, to help us uh, pick up anything that might be uh, on a camouflage type surface. Uh, keep in mind we're spraying a fluorescent dye stain prior to using the light source, so that does help us see um, the prints much better. Uh, 
there are some areas on these shotguns that were uh, like textured, which would not be very conducive to prints. But as far as the camouflage area, uh, you know, it, it, it makes it a little, little harder to, to see, but we do have the means to be able to analyze it uh, thoroughly. And these items that we've been talking about, when you process them for fingerprint evidence, you use the super glue fuming method? Yes, ma'am. While you were processing those guns, did you collect um, swabs from each gun? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to hand you Kate's Exhibit 308, if you take a look at that. Yes, ma'am. The, these, are, these are the envelopes that I uh, placed the swabs from, this, from the shotguns. Uh, it's got my date and initials and uh, where it came from on the shotgun. Your Honor, at this time, this tape removes tape exhibit 308 into evidence. Okay. Good. Now, did you receive a 30 round magazine that was full of 300 blackout cartridges? I did. Did you test that item for fingerprint evidence? I did. Did you find any fingerprints on that magazine? It was, again, as, as the shotguns, it was all no value for comparison. Um, what about each of the bullets that was in that magazine? Did you examine them in any way? Yes, ma'am. I, I took each one of them out of the uh, magazine and processed all of them individually. Did you find any fingerprint evidence on those bullets? Uh, no, ma'am. I did not. And what did you do with these swabs that you collected? Once I collected the swabs, I allowed them to air dry. And then I, once I secured them into envelopes, I seal them, put my date, uh, initials, and then I package them up accordingly. And they ultimately wind up with the uh, DNA department. Uh, I believe in this case, I, I took them down to our evidence control department and then DNA will pick them up from there. All right. One moment. Sorry. <coughs> no further questions from the state at this time. Don't answer any questions from the state. Seat for your honor. Um, all these items were processed in the lab. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, sir. And help me to understand this. Um, you processed um, three shotguns? I believe that was right, yes, sir. Um, you processed, were any of them loaded with, with shotgun shells? I don't recall them being loaded. So you did not process any of the, if they were loaded, you didn't process any of the shells in them? Um, I, I, normally, when a weapon comes into the laboratory, it's, it's cleared and unloaded prior to it getting to our laboratory. So, um, had they been unloaded, I would have pro or had they been loaded, they would have been unloaded prior to me receiving them, and I would have processed what had been inside the weapon at that time. So, the, the weapon we identified earlier as as um, it on the table. I apologize. It's right here. Number um, 22, item number 22. The camo Benelli Super, I'm sorry, yeah, Benelli Super Black Eagle with two unfired shotgun shells. <coughs> you process that at the lab? Yes, sir. Was the gun loaded when it came to you? My notes do not indicate that it was loaded. Um, and as, as I said, uh, normally when a, when a weapon, a shotgun, comes into the laboratory, it's, it's, it's unloaded prior to it coming to me. Uh, my notes indicate that it was not loaded. And the other shotguns, uh, as, I mean, I've looked at your analysis on them, um, that, uh, that there were no fingerprints of evidentiary value on the three other shotguns, right? That's correct. Um, but there's no indication um, that you processed, the, if they had been loaded and unloaded, any of those shotgun shells, correct? 
That's correct. I, I only processed what was what was given, uh, what was brought into the laboratory. And you processed those on June 9th, is that correct? That sounds right, yes, sir, June 9th. Okay. Now, um, the cartridges, the, the, uh, the, the bullet, and then there's a casing on, on a typical semi-automatic weapon. Were you ever asked to, you were asked to process the ejected cartridges that were involved in the uh, in the murder, correct? The 308s. I mean, the yep. 300 blackouts. Yes, sir. And those had been fired, and what you indicated that once a, a bullet or a shotgun shell had been fired, it heats up. Is that is that yeah. why you can't get a fingerprint off of it? Well, that that would be one one uh, possible explanation: um, heat, friction. Um, they're on the ground. You know, weather can have an effect sometimes if it's raining or if it's hot or cold. There are lots of things that could have an effect on whether or not a print would be left. And I think your testimony is, that if not rarely, never found fingerprints on an expended casing. Is that correct? Well, I, I wouldn't say rarely never. Um, I, I, I know of cases in our laboratory that have been uh, where they have been uh, able to identify prints on cartridge cases. It just doesn't happen uh, very often, but it, do, it does happen. Okay, but then you processed um, a number of, there was a, a, uh, a uh, magazine with a number of 308, I mean, 300 blackout shells that had never been fired, correct? Yes, sir. Bullets, I'm sorry. That's correct. And that, that's, that's a brass, piece of brass, right? Yes, sir. I mean, is a piece of brass conducive to fingerprints? Uh, yes, sir. It can be, yes, sir. Any evidence these bullets have been, uh, the bullets have been wiped or something or just... I mean, give the, please explain to the jury why you wouldn't normally get fingerprints off of a piece of brass, a unspent bullet. Why is that? Well, you got to keep in mind that a, that a latent print is, is nothing more than, or mostly moisture. Uh, they're very fragile. It doesn't take much to, to wipe a print off of, of the surface. Uh, these, the cartridges I think that you're speaking of were in a magazine, so they've been, they've been shoved into a magazine um, and then they, then, then, you know, then you got to get them out. So, uh, so you got you got friction there going on. Uh, but most any you know anything any surface that's smooth and, and fairly clean and not corrugated or textured can be conducive to prints. Uh, I have developed prints on cartridges before. Um, it just doesn't happen very often. Again, it's a brass surface, a, almost a polished brass surface. Did you say because it's mostly moisture, isn't there some oil involved in that from the, from the fingers? Or am I wrong about that? Well, you would have, as far as the coming from your fingerprints, from the fingers or well, from... I mean, the finger, that, uh, I mean, it's always just moisture. It, it's mostly 98 to 99 percent moisture. Uh, and then you might have some other substances mixed in there. Uh, but it's mostly mostly just sweat is what's you, left behind. You do retrieve fingerprints occasionally, do you not? You find fingerprints on things? Oh yes, sir. I, I, I find I've I've uh, developed quite a few prints in my 30 years of doing okay. this. And once you develop a print, you can compare it based on how many points you have to have a, to do a comparison to make well, a match. Well, there there's no there's no set number. Uh, in this in this country, uh, there, where you have to have a certain minimum number of points, um, you just have to have a sufficient amount of clarity and 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 to be able to determine that an impression was made by a certain individual. Okay. Um, did you ever go to the scene of these murders? No, sir. I did not. You were not called out that night. No, sir. So the forensic folks that went out there, did, to your knowledge, did they? throw any powder down? Did they do anything to find any fingerprints that night? I honestly don't know. Um, I, I did not look at their um, notes from their crime scene or, or what have you. I really had no uh, real reason to. Um, I was just asked to process the things that they brought. Me. So let me ask you this. You've got a doorknob right here. Doorknob. I just grabbed it to open it. It's brass. Would that leave a fingerprint? It, it's possible. You, you have again. You have to consider uh, 
how, how much someone perspires when they touch something. You have to consider how soon after the doorknob was touched did someone else grab the doorknob because the latent print is extremely fragile. It doesn't take much to obliterate a print. Um, but you would check. If you were on the scene, you'd look. If, if, if I was on the scene and I felt like that area was accessed by someone, I, I probably would have checked, yes. I mean, if, you, if, the, if the, it, it appeared that there had been uh, a, a shotgun blast to the victim inside uh, a, a uh, room behind that door, um, and you didn't know whether the door was open or closed um, before that person was um, shepherded in there or walked in there, uh, you would want to at least look at the knob, right? Yes, sir. I, I, I probably would, but uh, you know, I was not on this scene, so I don't I don't really know exactly what all they had going on. So, but uh, but if, if with your scenario that you're speaking of, yes, sir, I, and, I I probably would have checked. And you would expect to see notes somewhere uh, from the crime scene folks that they uh, looked at the doorknob. But you can't just eyeball it. Don't you have to put some powder on it, or don't you have to put something on it to raise the the visibility of the fingerprint? Well, uh, yes, sir. In, in, in some cases, you can actually see a print if, it, if it's more of a what we call a patent print. A patent print is a print that might be left behind with a, you know, in, a, in a residue. It could be in grease, could be in blood, it could be in dirt, uh, anything such as that. So, but ordinarily, when you go to look for prints, you've got to do some sort of processing to uh, a surface, depending on the surface and depending on just what you're trying to, what you're trying to do. So if you had a relatively small room where uh, somebody's head had exploded and blood and all kinds of uh, bodily fluids were sprayed over the inside of that room, you would want to take a meticulous examination of that room to see if there are any fingerprints in blood or, or other bodily fluids, would you not? Would you? I, I, I would, yes, sir. And you would expect to see something in some report by the crime scene folks where they actually did such an examination, would you not? Would you expect to see notes detailing that they at least looked at it? Y yes, sir. I mean, I, you know, again, this is, you know, I wasn't at the scene. I, I, I can, but if you're describing this type of a scene, if it was me, I, I, I would take notes, uh, you know, detailed notes, uh, you know, because you know, photographs, notes, sketches, all that kind of goes hand in hand. But there should have been, well, strike that. You would also expect to see um, any, any, any surface that could have come into contact with um, a perpetrator um, to have been processed, either photographed or processed in some way. You would expect to see that in the notes of the crime scene investigators, correct? I, I would think in the notes or, or, in, or in their, you know, testimony or um, anything such as that, um, you know, there, there should be something to, to explain what was done. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you know if there was a fingerprint person or somebody that had those skills in the crime scene uh, team that came out that night? I don't know. I know that there was no one from the Lake and Printing Department where I worked at the scene um, that day. Do you go out to crime scenes? Do you go to crime scenes? I've, I've done plenty in, the, in my earlier days, um, but I have, I have not been on crime scenes for quite some time. Do you have people in your Lake and Printing unit that do go to crime scenes? Uh, not, not, not really. Um, the, the Lake Print Department, the way it was set up, we, we pretty much are in, in the laboratory setting and we, we process evidence that comes in from crime scenes. Uh, we don't typically go uh, to the crime scene. And so I guess if I'm summarizing this, everything they had you look at, you looked at in the lab. Yes, sir. And you found no, when I say identifiable prints, it sounds to me like you found no evidence of any prints. Well, I, I, I found any, any time I report something is no value for comparison, that means that I did find evidence of fingerprints. It just wasn't enough to compare it to anyone. When any time I say nothing was observed, that means there was nothing observed. So, um, 
I mean, I looked at all these. Other than the um, no value for comparison on the cell phone, that would mean you saw something, but you didn't have enough to compare. Uh, yes, sir, and you know, the, no, it, was, it was no value. You know, keep in mind again, their latents are fragile. Um, you've got weather involved. Um, you know, water, rain, that sort of thing uh, certainly uh, is is detrimental to uh, fingerprint evidence being left behind. So, other than the cell phone, everyone else says. No fingerprint evidence was observed. That would mean there was nothing, not even a partial, right? Yes, sir. Any time that result is in the report, that's what that means. So yes, other than the cell phone, you didn't even find a, any, any evidence of fingerprints, not a partial, not a smudge, not anything. Well, I, I believe there were some additional uh, long guns that came into me uh, where I did get no value for comparison, uh, but the initial shotgun that came into me was nothing was observed. Yes, sir. And the initial shotgun would have been number 22. Uh, yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. Um, and would it surprise you to know that uh, Mr. Murdoch was seen holding that shotgun, um, had actually um, retrieved it from his house, brought it down to the murder scene? Council's testifying. Response? I'm just citing evidence that the state's already put into evidence. I'm not testifying to it because these are facts that have been already established by the state. He's an expert. He can opine. Pardon? He's an expert, therefore he can give an opinion. The objection is overruled. Would it surprise you to know that Mr. Murdaugh was seen that evening when the first responders came? holding that shotgun um, and and uh, it, and the state has indicated um, I mean that's not in conflict um, no one's challenging that and yet there were no I mean you found no evidence of fingerprints is that correct right yes sir and you know that that's you know prints aren't always left on surfaces when you touch them um, you know just because you touch something does not mean you're going to leave a print um, and there are all kind of variables as to why. Would you agree with me you found no prints on any of the items you, you were asked to examine? Cartridge cases, fired, unfired, shotguns, the shells in the shotguns. Uh, you just found no prints whatsoever. I, I found none of value for comparison, um, which tells me that there, there was something there, but it just wasn't of value for, to compare. And it's only yes. on the uh, cell phone. The cell phone and then the additional long guns that came into me uh, later. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Court's indulgence. Uh, yes, ma'am. I was actually promoted to lieutenant over the Lake Print Crime Scene Department in 1998, uh, where I was in that role for about six years. And um, in your experience in that position, are um, crime scene personnel trained to look for fingerprints at a crime scene? Yes, ma'am. Uh, back when I was the lieutenant over the crime scene department, we used to do the crime scene, we did the printing, we did we did everything. Now it's 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 two separate departments. We have a late print department and we have a crime scene department. The crime scene department, as I understand it, they are trained in how to process crime scenes, which would include how to uh, process certain things on this own scene for fingerprints. For in other words, if it was something that was large and not not uh, not able to transport back to the laboratory. They are. They do. Ha they do get some training in how to process for prints. And with such a bloody scene, did you get any bloody prints in this case? I, I was not uh, submitted any uh, bloody prints uh, in this case. Thank you. Nothing further. Nothing further. Nothing further. Thank you. You may step down. Thanks, sir.
Call your next witness. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give to this court to be the whole 